We've never seen a revolution in creative tools and the accessibility of creating art and other creative mediums as we are seeing with AI art. AI art is the most powerful tool to allowing users to create things that they otherwise don't have the skills or even the physical function to be able to make. And I think that is amazing. And I wanna help everyone possible make awesome works of art without the tech, without the software, without the nitty gritty nerdy details getting in the way. And that is what this channel is all about here at Analog Dreams. And it's also what this course is all about. This is my mid journey masterclass, as I call it, as I typically do these kinds of masterclasses for different software in different fields. And in this specific course, I'm going to show you how to do everything in mid journey, which is a very specific AI art generator that you can use to make all kinds of works of art just straight out of it, but also take it and take it to the next level using your own photo editing skills, video editing skills, artistic skills, whatever. And I'm gonna show you how to get up and running. It specifically uses a program called Discord, which is a text and voice and video calling app that back in the day was originally for gamers, but is now used for all sorts of things, including schools and businesses and art tools like this. And so I'm gonna show you how to get up and running. You will need a Discord account and a Mid Journey account, but I'll show you how to do that over on the screen capture side. I do wanna let you know that I finally have my own art available for sale on merch at analogdreams.threadless.com. It contains my analog glitch art. This came off a of VHS tape and still looks absolutely stellar on a shirt, as well as some of my AI art pieces. It has been a, an entire year in the making to finally get a merch shop up and running. And I'm super stoked to share this with you. Again, analogdreams.threadless.com. This is gonna be a full masterclass that has six or seven episodes in it. And they may get long, a little intimidating, but I'll have time codes in the description that'll show you the chapter markers on YouTube to find the exact sections you're looking for, or if you need to reference back. Remember to take your time, have fun with it. That's the whole point. Be creative, have fun. Don't get stressed out. Go at your own pace, pause, come back if you need to, whatever and check the playlist link in the description below for all of the episodes so you can just go through it at your own pace. And I'll even have some mobile and iPad versions as well. If you're not uh, a, a huge desktop user, I got you covered. All right, to get started with Midjourney, you'll need to go to their website, midjourney.com and choose the join the beta option if you haven't joined already. This is gonna take you to their Discord server. Now, Discord is a voice and video calling application. It's a service. Uh, it started out most popular among gamers and the like, but it's been used now for schools and businesses and things like that. If you've ever used Slack, it's like the gamified version of Slack. So you will have to make an account with Discord to sign in for Midjourney. I know that's a little confusing. You don't have a Midjourney account necessarily. It's just your Discord account. It's kind of like when you log into some website or forum or something with your Google account or your Facebook account or your Twitter account. Same kind of idea. You're doing a social login with Discord because Midjourney actually operates entirely through Discord. Now, at the time of recording, they are working on a web application and they're taking a lot of feedback for what needs to be done for that. But I think their main tool will still remain the Discord bot for a while. So once you create a Discord account and sign in and go through the Midjourney website, it's going to say, okay, continue to Discord and it's gonna take you to their Discord server. Now, Discord, Discord is set up kind of like the old IRC days, if you were around for that, or like Team Viewer, Team Viewer, uh, TeamSpeak or Ventrilo, where you have a bunch of different servers you can be a part of, and then there's different channels in that. So think of the, think of Discord itself as like an office park with a bunch of different office buildings in it. Individual Discord servers are like the individual office buildings. So you'd go to one for a specific business, in this case, Midjourney. And then there are a bunch of things in here. Do not get overwhelmed by this. This is a lot of information it throws, you, throws at you at once. Take your time. I'm gonna make a recommendation real quick right off the bat here. Come over here to the top right where it says hide member list and hide that. You don't need that. No advantage to having that. Ignore the download button for now unless you wanna run it locally. I do, uh, but for now we'll just show this here in the web browser to start. And it's probably gonna ask you to agree to some rules or something. But once you end up here, you're going to be thrown off because there's going to be a lot of channels. Now I have a little bit more because I'm a paid member. Uh, you only get like 10 free credits or hours or whatever. There's a lot of information here. So just take a breather. Take your time. Over here on the left are the different channels and categories of channels available to you in this particular server. Now, uh, continuing with our building analogy, the categories, like for example, support right here is a category of channels. So then there's two channels in that category, one for trial members, one for paid members. Then newcomer rooms, 
rooms for newbies, is a category. Think of the categories like a floor on the office building. So the server is an office building, Discord is the office park, the categories are floors, and then the individual channels, back to the chat room days, are individual rooms within those floors. So, you know, you got to go to floor three if you want support, and then you go either to the trial support room or the member support room. Hope that helps it make sense to some of you. It may not. Top left is going to be the most important channels. This is scrollable with your scroll wheel uh, or just dragging on mobile. You've got announcements, and so these are updates regarding the actual mid-journey project itself. So, for example, here's the one where they're talking about they're going to develop a next-generation web experience, and so they want your feedback. Then there's status. This is status regarding the service of mid-journey. So whenever it goes down or there might be hiccups in service or something like that, you can find that information out in this channel. Then there's rules, which just tell you all the rules about using mid-journey and blah, blah, blah. Read them. Make sure you know, especially if you're an actual artist. Make sure you know the terms of the tools that you're working with. Got frequently asked questions, just generally about mid-journey, and it's going to take you to the documentation, which we'll cover. Getting started tells you how to get started making an image, which we'll cover here in a moment. Uh, some polls just for them to gather feedback. You can answer the most recent ones if you want. And then a welcome room just pings every individual user as they join to tell them to <laughs> use, follow the directions and everything. Well, that's cool and all. How do I get started making images? Well, first and foremost, you head on over to one of these newbie rooms, newbies 44, for example. Scroll all the way down to the bottom so you can see what's going on. The chat box is at the bottom here. And then you're going to type the way to initiate a conversation with the mid journey discord bot is slash imagine. And you can see as you start typing things, it will give you different commands. Some of them are baked into discord, like doing the shrug emote. Some of them are specific to mid journey and they'll have the little mid journey boat icon next to them. So we're going to say slash imagine, and then we're going to give it a prompt. For example, this person was just doing a meeting of two emperors in space. So we're going to do a space emperor ruling the galaxy and that's what we wanted to generate and then press enter you have to have this prompt piece in there if that didn't go start over press enter it's going to tell me i'm not a newbie so i can't chat here uh but that's the, the general idea we're going to go to our own private room here to show you what's going on but there are a lot of different channels here for newbies and then as you Spend more time here, whatever. Um, there are other channels you can spend time in, including day, like specific theme ones. So characters uh, restrict you to only doing things involving character generation, etc. There's also actual chat rooms to chat with other users to get more information. So there's a show and tell room. Uh, so people can show off their cool images. A good way to get inspiration. Uh, see what people are proud of. Uh, you've got paint overs. And so uh, if you want to show off or see how people are doing, you know, what people are doing with their mid journey images outside of mid journey, you can do that here. And so here, this person's done some stickers. And if you see any image at any point that you want to refer back to, use for inspiration, whatever, I have an entire episode of this course, and that one's already recorded about organizing your files and doing just that. But a quick recommendation. Click on the image. It's going to make it real big for you so you can see it. And then at the bottom, open original. This will open up a dedicated tab with just the image that you can come back to later, or you can save out the image to your folder structure. And again, whole video on organization ready to go for that. So you get some channels for that, and then some more dedicated chat channels for discussion about mid-journey in general, feedback for it, discussion about the philosophy of AI art, if you want to dive into that with the riff ref. You've got tips for prompt crafting. Always good information there. Can help really figure out what you're supposed to, you know, put into your prompts. There are a lot of resources that people will link you. I will have some in the description. And again, we'll have a whole episode about it. Stuff about the next generation web client conversation. I haven't really been keeping up with it, but lots of stuff there. But let's go back to where we were trying to catch up and actually generate an image. Now I'm going to do this in direct response to the mid journey bot as a DM, which is a direct message. Uh, if you're a paid user, you get to have your own private access to the bot where it's not in these massive, crowded, kind of overstimulating rooms. And you can chat with the bot there. And once you have paid and you have access to that, all you have to do is find a post by the Midjourney bot, click the profile icon, and choose message. And it will take you to your conversation. That feels really passive aggressive. It's like, hey, what are you doing in the newbie room? You're not a newbie. <laughs> All right, I'm going to switch back to the full screen of normal Discord. This is the Windows client, so I can keep kind of in my own space here, if that makes sense. 
All right, so we're going to go back to what we were doing. Imagine a space emperor ruling the galaxy. And then press enter, and that will generate your image. You can see here it says waiting to start, and then as time goes, it, it'll take a minute, it'll take a couple minutes, and as you do crazy more stylization and quality things, it'll take more time. But as you can see here, right here, we can watch the AI think and conjure up the image that we're coming up with. And it updates, you know, in certain intervals, you don't get to see it kind of like animating into place, but like getting a cool slideshow as it figures it out. And sometimes you think you know what it's going to do, and then it goes off in another direction, and that's pretty cool too. Now, just a quick note with this. If you were doing this in the public channels, these are very crowded. There are a lot of users at this point in the server. I don't even know how many are online at this point. Actually, it doesn't even show me. There, the the Discord bot is in like almost 200,000 servers alone on top of all the people in this one. Like there's, I think, a million users they were touting of MidJourney right now. So you can see here, immediately you're going to lose track of your image. Don't freak out about that. By the way, just a tip, we'll have lots more of these tips later, so if this is too much for you right now, we'll come back to it. But if you see an image you like and you want to reference as well, click Add a Reaction here. This is going to let you attach an emote to that image, and specifically you want the envelope emote. If you don't see it here because you haven't used it yet, just type envelope or en and choose that one. And it will DM you the image and the seed, which is a piece of information you can use to iterate upon that image. Again, we'll cover this more in depth later, but I just want to give you some idea of the flexibility we're working with as we get into the basics. But if you typed in your command and you already lost your image and you're like, what the hell is going on here? You have the, and almost the most top right here, you got this little, it used to be an at symbol, which made way more sense. Now it's supposed to be a little inbox. I don't think anybody really recognizes that. But you can go over here to messages and unreads. And obviously this will include everything from every Discord server you're in. But specifically, if you're just in the, you know, mid-journey one or whatever, it will tag you as it finishes your mid-journey prompts. And then you can jump to the message and then you can interact with it as I'll show you and things like that. So we're going to take a pause for a sec. That was a lot. I gave you a way to navigate through it and we just generated our first round of images. We're going to ignore the one I sent to me. We did a space emperor ruling a galaxy. And what it gives you is a quadrant with four or a grid with four quadrants of images. And it is four variations based on the prompt that you gave it. And so we gave it a prompt of a space emperor ruling a galaxy. And it's so it tried four different ways to imagine the scene that we want. Again, you can click on the image to view it a little bit bigger. And then you can save that out if you like the grid itself or you want to crop it off and just leave it as is. But we can also take this further. You have a bunch of options below the image. You have these U buttons, these V buttons, and a spinny button. The U buttons are for upscaling. This will take one of the individual images, and it's quadrant left to right, top to bottom, so one, two, three, four, and it will upscale that image to a bigger size and add more details so that you get a more complete image because this is going to be really small blurry even if you upscale it like normally. It's not going to be super usable. The V buttons give you more variance based on that same idea it came up with for the image. So you can see here it has very different ideas for what it thinks my prompt should look like and so I can generate more variants based on the one that I want. So for example, I really like three down here bottom left as is. I don't think it's going to come up with anything better based on this concept. So I'm going to tell that one to upscale with U3. Number two, however, I think I might like it. But I also want to see what else it comes up with in this form factor or in this little fashion here. And so I'm going to choose V2. And we can come back and upscale it later if we want to and tell it to start generating variants on that. And then we scroll to the bottom here and it will start those progress. If at any point you don't like any of the four images that it comes up with or you don't like most of them and you don't want to have to retype everything for your prompt, you can click the little spinny icon here and it will just regenerate from scratch based on your prompt. So we're going to do all three of those actions so we can see what happens with them. We're going to let it process for a sec so I don't get you all confused with what's happening on screen. Just remember, this is doing a lot of things in the background kind of on its own. And so don't freak out if it's all changing on you. Just step away for a second. Not a big deal. I can dive more in depth in a separate video or you can check out my video over on my main Epos Fox YouTube channel to understand what's happening here. But effectively, the AI is trained on an unimaginable number of images that it then, you know, classifies them through a process called clip it classifies them like 
this is a phone, this is an apple, this is a tree, and rates them on a scale of everything that's happening in the image to figure out what each object actually is and recognize it. And then it blurs out the image into just Gaussian blur noise, which is, you know, just dots and noise, and then does its best to recreate the object, the subject of that image out of noise, just using, you know, de-blurs and drawing and effects and things like that. And then it's trained by ranking those based on how well it achieved that result. Train that forever on a bunch of expensive hardware with tons of images and tons of tests and blah, blah, blah. And then it can create these completely unique images based on effectively the exact same way you learn to draw. You learn to draw any object by taking in your life experiences of it, studying it, studying the process of drawing it, and then drawing it. Exact same idea. All right. The bot has finished our tasks that we assigned. And again, it's a lot easier when you're DMing, DMing the bot. If you are floating in the pub public server, you will just have to keep your eye on the mentions little button in your top right inbox here. Because you're going to get lost in here. That is beautiful as well. So we have done three things. We have first generated four more variants based on that second image. And you can see here. We get similar ideas, but we get different looking emperors and some slight different details. For the most part, I like where these are going. I'm probably going to upscale number two of this one as well. I really like this one, but you can see when you start doing variants, you start and iterating on your images. Uh, certain shapes, like circles, start to kind of fall apart a little bit, as do faces. But I can clean that up in Photoshop. So I'm actually going to tell it to upscale two and three from this one. But we'll wait so I don't overwhelm you here, and we'll move on. We also upscaled our third image from the last one, which made it a lot bigger, a lot higher resolution, and gave it a lot more detail. Cool. Now we can save that out or copy it to our clipboard to use in Photoshop, whatever. There are some other actions we can do, but we also just generated entirely new images based on that prompt, and it came up with wonderful ideas that are completely different from the first one, and I love these as well. So again, you can continue through this process of iterating. Now, for the variants, the four quadrant grid, all those actions are always going to be the same. You know what to do at this point. Upscale, create variants, or reroll, as I'm going to call it. For your upscaled images, now you have some interesting options. You can preview it, see what it looks like with a lot more detail, decide if you still like it. This is kind of looking all, you know, Sith Lord-esque. I kind of dig it. It did add a lot of details, though. So I have two, well, technically three paths I can take here. I can upscale it to the max, which is going to make it even higher resolution with what it already generated using normal AI upscaling like Tobaz Labs, things like that. If I want it higher resolution to then edit in Photoshop, upscale further for print, things like that. Or I can do what's called a light scale redo. Now, light scale is kind of just a traditional upscale. So mid-journey upscales work in two different ways. There's the light scale, which is just what you would think of when you think of upscaling. Upscaling is just enlarging, enlarging, you know, like blowing up a picture back in the day. We scan in a picture, blow it up, print it out bigger. It is basically that. That is what a light scale or light upscale does. That is traditional upscaling. It will still use some fancy upscaling tech to like preserve details, but it's not doing anything else constructive to the image. It's just making it bigger. The normal upscale button is actually a detail enhancer. It actually continues generating the image on a bigger canvas with more details. And in some cases, that's desirable. In some cases, it's not. And so like, for example, with portraits or details where it just kind of starts adding a bunch of funky stuff, you may actually decide you don't like the very detailed upscale. And you can come down here and click the light scale redo. And that will restart the upscale process from the original image that you clicked on, which is number three down here, but do it without adding a whole bunch of extra details. Now you can still upscale that one to the max and a very common technique that we will show in future videos for producing a final image from this is to both light scale and max upscale the image, scale them together, and then you can blend in the different elements. So if it adds too much funkiness in one section, you can blend that out to the light scale. But if it adds detail you like in another section, you can keep that as well and you get the best of both worlds. Now you will notice there are a few other buttons here. Let's talk about what those do. Now you have the magic wand to just say make variations, which is the same thing we already did. You know, if I had scrolled up here for number three and clicked V3 instead, it will be the same thing. You just have the option down here so you're focused on this image. You've got the upscale to max and the light scale redo. We already talked about that. You have a web button. This is going to open up the Midjourney website to your image page. We haven't talked about the Midjourney website yet. We will in a moment, but that's how you get there. But then you have a rating system, and this rates the upscale process to help train the bot to know when it kind of messed up. You don't want to abuse this. You can get banned if you 
try to you know deliberately mess up the results but if I upscale this and it ends up just adding a whole bunch of stuff that wasn't there or like in one instance in a stream I did I upscaled what was just kind of of a blurry figure of a person in the background and when it upscaled it just turned into something com like a complete blurred smudge and didn't even try to recreate that person I would rank it low this one actually turned out wonderful upscaled so I'm gonna rank it high I love it I love what it did there I wanted to know that we keep scrolling down to the bottom it's tells me that I rated it with a heart. Now, any message like this that says only you can see this, dismiss this message, I will talk about this in the organization section, but I would recommend clicking dismiss this message just to clear out the extra messages in your Discord because as you start scrolling up, it will start getting laggy as you use this over the course of almost an entire year like I have. Now we have our light upscaled version, which you can see here, if we look at it side by side with the fully upscaled, we're losing a lot of detail but it looks a little bit cleaner. So for example, in the areas around what are effectively the lightsabers, I might want to keep that kind of low detail to give it the more ambient glow kind of look. And in fact, it actually added details to the circle halo look that I don't like that aren't in the detailed one for some reason. So I would kind of blend between those. But you can also see on the detailed one, it kind of cut off the lightsabery bit there. And so that's a scenario where I would use both images, blend the lightsaber going behind the cape from the light scale and keep that there. And again, you can also rate this. I'm actually going to give this... Uh, I'm specifically going to give this a 2 out of 4. Because of... I, I, don't, I don't know how to like quantify little details. But because it added these weird lines that weren't there. And they weren't in the detailed one. That is the basic flow of mid-journey. That's it. You type... Slash imagine come up with whatever you wanted to generate, describing it in as much detail as possible and telling it to generate it. And then you either keep iterating on that generation or you upscale it and you go do something with it. Be it posted to social media, further craft it into an art piece, print it out, whatever. It's fairly straightforward, but it also gets super in-depth. That's why this is part one of a big multi-part course because it goes so much further than this. This is just the beginning. But this is an exciting beginning because just like that, with one, two, three, four, five, six words, I'm generating some epic looking pieces already. Then I'm going to go ahead and start upscaling here because they freaking rule. I'm going to upscale all four of those. Keep in mind, you can only send so many commands at a time and then it'll start queuing them up and you only have so many limited credits as a free user. So you want to choose your upscales and things like that wisely because all of them eat away your credits. And if you're like me and you end up down an ADHD rabbit hole of a random idea that turns into this crazy drawing and you want to see how far it can go, you'll end up losing all your credits. And I have spent way too much money on this service already myself. But that's it. With a few words, a slash command, and just getting used to the Discord client, either on the web browser, on your mobile device, or on your, you know, running locally on your computer you have the ability to generate unique and amazing art and i don't think there's anything more powerful than that and i don't think we've had we, we've had so many bumps in the democratization of creative mediums over the past couple decades with video and content creation and live streaming and audio i don't think in just terms of raw like art content generation we've ever had such a powerful bump like accelerate us here and we're on the we're just at the beginning of the road here with these kinds of things and i can't wait to share this adventure with you and i can't wait to help empower you to make awesome art pieces i want to see your ideas before we talk about that i want that's, that's a good segue to talking about the website the midjourney website that's where you can see other people's ideas or your own ideas so again midjourney.com or click the web button next to one of the things and it'll take you to your feed for the image so, like, this one is freaking amazing. Holy balls. Like, look at that. It's like a emperor helmet floating in a nebula. Like, what? I imagine this is what an entity looks like that is made up of galaxies, but is also ruling the galaxy. <laughs> so, this will take you to an individual job page. And a job is, of course, a task that you tell it to do. It will give you your creator name. It will tell you when it was generated. It will show you the parent image that you can go back to. So it tracks a kind of fingerprint of where images were created and helps you kind of, especially if you're looking at other people's pieces, kind of track and the, 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 the string of how they came up with it. It'll tell you the resolution that the image is currently at. It'll tell you uh, the mode that you're operating in in terms of like relaxed, fast, things like that. Don't worry about that for right now. 
Then you have some other options. You can bookmark it. You can rank it yourself. This is my own piece, so that's kind of silly. You can save the image. And then you can also copy it. So we're not going to do that for our own. We're instead going to come over here. You have a bunch of buttons on the sidebar. Homepage just takes you to your homepage with all the work that you've created thus far. You can see a lot of the pieces I've been working on as I have been testing a lot of things. A lot of these right here are actually for testing mobile AI upscalers to help you save on your credits and things like that. That's a video coming very soon to this channel, so get subscribed. But it will show you just kind of a feed of the projects that you've worked on and some of your most used uh, descriptors, things like that, which is really cool. I dig that. I uh, feel like I don't recognize that one, but hey, who knows? It'll tell you how many jobs you've done, how many are public, how many are unique. Uh, I think that's based on like, like it's not unique if it's an iteration or an upscale. But then you can view other feeds. So there's the community feed. And here you can see the art other people are doing. And this is where you can really get some inspiration from. I'm going to go ahead and full screen this because we're not going to go back to Discord for a minute. So this is the community feed. UI is fairly self-explanatory. You can refresh it. You can uh, select multiple pieces at a time with this button at the top. And you have a search bar. We're going to search in just a minute because I am actually really digging some of the images here. You have some sorting modes. Hot is just what's like hot right now. It's kind of like Reddit. Rising is what's gaining popularity. New is just brand new images people are generating. And then top is going to be the top that you can sort by like all time this week, whatever. But then you can go through and again, you can sort by upscales, grid views. You can see everyone's grids. You can search for these specific types of channels that they were generated in from the Discord. Lots of sorting tools. And then you have the images themselves. So you can scroll through, it will be basically an infinite scrolling feed, and you can see the beautiful works of art. Look at that. That is great. That is great. And I'll show you what I'm doing here in just a minute. I actually want to come back up. That one is great. That one is great. That one is great. I have a problem where I find too many things that I like and clog up my bookmarks, but that is not your problem to deal with right now. That Pokeball is just incredible. So what I am doing is I am bookmarking these pieces. Uh, just like you would bookmark a website or anything else, this little, here, let me find another one I want to do. Yes, this one. This little page flap, I mean, it's meant to look like an old school, like, ribbon bookmark on a book. One of those things where we're making digital icons based on analog things that most people these days haven't used. You click that, and it saves it to your bookmarks, which are over here on the left, that you can come back to for later. You can come back to them either for inspiration or for coming back to try to iterate upon and generate your own versions of things like that. You also have the ability to rank the images. Now you have bad, eh, happy, and stoked on it. And you can rank them based on those emotions that you feel. And theoretically, that's supposed to also be training the AI based on, you know, the, the viewer emotion that's felt from these images. However, I've seen back and forth responses from mods in the Discord about whether that feature is actually functional yet or not. So it's possible they could go back and like retroactively apply it even if it's not right now anyway. So don't take that too much to heart just yet if that's not functioning. But you can come through, bookmark, and react to different images. And you don't want to just do them to the same like I'm doing. I'm doing it just because I know consistently. Look at this Furby. It's amazing. But like... You want to rank as many as you can because it's just the cool thing to do. But I'm also bookmarking ones that like are like really cool ideas that I want to expand upon in my own work. And so I'm just doing that to come back and adjust these later. And you will see there are pieces of all sorts of different styles and design ideas. And that's what's really cool is you can find something that really registers home for you. And then you can take those ideas and those themes and really start making something of your own. I'm getting addicted here. All right, as mentioned, you can sort some more. So we can start looking at grids, which can give you more insight into the kind of iteration process, as it were. And again, I have so many I want to book, bookmark. You can sort by specific channels. So if I just want to see characters and ca grids of characters, I can do that. So I can start getting some ideas of how things are happening. You can sort by rising, new, top, as I mentioned. You can search. So I can search for... Uh, jeans to find someone wearing jeans if someone's made a character that's rising with a grid and here we go we got a bunch of characters that had jeans somewhere mentioned in the prompt speaking of the prompts when you hover over a picture you're given a preview of what the prompt is to give you an idea of the terms the descriptors the arguments that they use 
to describe the image, which is going to help inform your decisions for doing the same thing. Now, I will say it's considered rude by some in the community to just outright rip off someone's prompt because then you're kind of, you know, kind of stealing their idea. But you can take that and then further modify it and keep iterating on it to get closer to what you want. So like, I love how this portrait turns out. It's maybe not the exact portrait that I want, but some of these elements, like the idea that the base is just portrait of a beautiful anime girl might be something I want to start with. And so you get all the different elements that they used here. You can also copy the prompt, which is just going to be the descriptors, or you can copy the command, which is going to include some of the other arguments that we'll cover in future videos. But I will show you that in action here real quick. You can also, on certain images, open them in Discord. This one doesn't let you. By the way, if you find artists you specifically like or whatever, you can actually follow them. So if I find one relevant to the kind of stuff that I've been making lately, then I like know I want to follow and just see you know, what they make moving forward. I know there was something I was really stoked on earlier. Yeah, we'll do the Cyberpunk Samurai, for example. We'll click on this. We'll follow them. We can also go through to their profile and see what else they've made. Some Dave Grohl action going on. Very cool. But then we can come in here, like I said, and we can copy either the prompt, and I'm going to show you which one, you know, what each of these do. I'm going to come back here to my Mid Journey bot, which has finished upscaling some of our other images. We're going to type slash imagine, and we're just going to paste in that prompt which this is beautiful or portrait of a beautiful anime girl, powerful leader, casual t-shirt, lo-fi colors, which we can generate and it's going to generate something. But a lot of prompts will also use additional arguments. There are a bunch of extra arguments you can use. Again, we'll cover in the next video about aspect ratios and uh, qualities and stylizations and things like that. And so if you copy the command, if they used any of those instead, Instead of just the descriptors, you get that as well. So you can see here, we've got waiting for the different types of images, which we'll talk about. You can actually wait the different descriptors you give to have more or less value. The aspect ratio, stylization, uh, chaos, overall image weight, and uplight, which is basically forcing that light upscale from the you know get-go. And so we can change some of this just a little bit here to be more to our needs. So portable... Portrait of a beautiful anime girl, casual t-shirt, lo-fi colors, anime drawing, anime, lo-fi art, lo-fi vibes. Instead of sunglasses, we'll just say glasses, and I want pigtails, maybe? Extra eyes, extra face. I've not actually seen that before. We're going to hit enter, and we're going to get something based on a very, very similar prompt. I did not iterate a lot here just because I'm doing it for an example, but we're going to end up with something pretty much different. Like you can enter the same prompt over and over and mostly get different results, but the goal is to then make something that's more unique to you. So you can copy prompts and do that to iterate. And then of course you have your personal feed, which is going to be from artists that you follow, uh, which is pretty cool to more kind of curate that a little bit better. You also have your bookmarks, so you can come back and reference all the cool stuff you want to reference for reference material, which is really cool. You have a map. It shows you how you relate to other people in terms of the number of things you've generated and like a word cloud of your most popular tags. I don't really know what it's supposed to serve. You've got rankings. So you can see how many images you have ranked that will earn you some badges in the community and also just help, like I said, train the AI. And sometimes they give like an extra credit to the top ranker of the day or something like that. So worth doing just for like yourself and the potential extrinsic reward, I guess. You've got archived images if you don't, if you just want to see everything you've generated without all the extra details. A dictionary will start to provide you documentation to uh, tweak your images. So you've got things like McGregor, which will do that, gendered, which will like gender bend an image, immersive. It, it shows kind of illustrative examples of certain terms and how they might impact an image. There's much better documentation on GitHub that we'll cover later. You've got a similar dictionary for styles. I don't think these are super great, especially, again, compared to what's in the Discord. And then you can manage your subscription and all of that. So really powerful stuff here on the website. And I'm very excited to see if they add any extra features when they do the next web UI that they're supposed to be doing. So it looks like our anime girl has been rendered. And instead of pigtails, we just have really short hair, which is fine. You can see the long neck. Uh, even though I love this one, the long neck flag that they gave is having a negative impact there kind of same there too don't know why here we're gonna we're gonna take the long neck off this will be the last one we generate here in this image but i want to show you how to iterate a little bit and so i can actually go in here 
I'm going to upscale number three purely for the purpose of getting a seed from it, and I will cover this more in depth in the future. But just as an example, the crazy stuff we're going to unlock for the next one. I'm going to copy all of this. I'm going to make a new imagine prompt, and I'm going to start tweaking it while that upscales, because I will be referencing that in a moment. Portrait of beautiful anime girl, powerful leader, casual t-shirt, lo-fi colors, lo-fi art, lo-fi vibes, glasses. I'm going to take out pigtails. I'm going to say long hair. Blonde. Maybe. Extra eyes, extra face. Actually, I'm going to say pink hair. We have a whole bunch of extra stuff here. I'm going to do quality two. And then I'm going to do seed. And we're going to paste the seed once this one is done here in just a moment. Again, this is just a preview of the crazy stuff we're going to get into over the next few episodes. As I'm super excited to share it with you. All right. Envelope reaction. Gets me a seed. Copy that. Nope. Nope. Paste it here. Generate. And I will be back in just a moment because it's going to take extra long due to my quality setting. You can already see here it's mostly ignoring the pink hair part. Although it's still generating a pretty long neck. Um, mostly because of where it's positioned. And we'll talk about all kinds of crazy prompt crafting. Yeah, we're still getting a super long neck. All right, so we're clearly not going to get what I want. But we are getting different images that because I used this one kind of as a reference, it's still trying to do this, like, backlit rim light halo thing on a couple of them. But yeah, these are the basics to mid-journey. It is interacting with the Discord bot. It is ranking images, sorting images, and then using all of this to turn into memes or awesome works of art. Here's a couple examples I've done recently, and I'm just getting started. And I just want to say, like, my whole reason for sharing all of this knowledge, for, like, trying to break it down and make it as accessible for anyone as possible without Discord or art knowledge, is because these tools provide such a huge accessibility bump for creating works of art that nothing else has done before that I think it's incredibly important to make sure that everyone can understand it. Because with how powerful these tools are, this means that truly your ideas and your message are going to be what's most important and you're much more easily able to convey it. And I want to make sure there are no barriers, no secrets to you being able to do that. But also keep in mind, artistry is a long process. I know, especially for someone like me with ADHD, where I like watch someone do something and I'm, and I'm like, okay, I can do that and can mostly kind of replicate some of that. It feels like you should be able to just pick up and start doing all the crazy posts you see on Twitter and Instagram and things like that. And it's not that easy. People spend decades honing their craft, even with stuff like this. And so I kind of dig that one. I kind of like that one too, although the eyes are completely trashed. Actually, I really, okay, I'm gonna upscale two and four and I'm gonna let you get out of here. Full playlist link will be in the description below as I complete the series. Uh, I have about, how many episodes do I have planned? I have eight actual, well, seven actual episodes of the masterclass for Mid Journey where you get everything you need to get basically from nothing to printing your own works of art. And then I have a few other episodes planned for like side tangents and things like that. So I hope you stick with me. Subscribe to the Analog Dreams YouTube channel here if you haven't already. And go check out my Threadless shop if you want to pick up some awesome merch for yourself or just see examples of this kind of stuff in action. I actually got one of my first stickers in recently and it looks absolutely incredible. I have a shirt coming very soon as well, so stoked for that. And yeah, remember to be kind. Rewind.